So if you believe the memes, a lot of aunties and uncles are worried about a new documentary. The subject is Freaknik. The spring break party began as a picnic for Atlanta HBCU students in the 80s, but then it became a lot more popular in the 90s and a lot more wild. The interstate, the highway, was a street park. There wasn't even a word called twerking. It was called booty shaking. There were no social media, barely had internet. During Freaknik, stars start coming in. You would see Tupac, Goody Mob, Outkast, Usher Raymond. I don't know what heaven looks like, but this seems like a version of it. You was lit, okay? The legacy of Freaknik is black joy, black self-determination. Black love, black excellence, black enterprise. But the legacy of Freaknik is also the ugly side. Jermaine Dupree is here. He's an executive producer of Freaknik, The Wildest Party Never Told. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. So I, when I sat down to watch it, I expected one thing, and it is so much more than, I guess, the Uncle Luke era of, of Freaknik. Yeah. Um, uh, he actually calls this Freaknik our Woodstock. you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the first, first of all, this is the first documentary um, that um, is done from the South to show the world the, the cultural explosion of Atlanta in the southern hip hop in itself, right? So if you if you if you take that, um, you you just start finding out things that that yeah, it's moves like um, Woodstock. I don't I, I didn't go to Woodstock, so Maybe I don't know much about Woodstock. But yeah. what I can imagine from what I've seen is yeah, it's it's a you know it's so many things that came from Freak Nick that it's not even you know like the word freak. The word freak is not about Luke. It's not about a strip club. It's not about girls wilding they got that from the song chic with the uh la freak song that chic had yeah. and um i just don't think people know you know what the history was and me being in atlanta it was a lot of history that i didn't know and i, I think that that's important that that's the only way we can move forward it's so well done because Thank it you. starts with just some hbcu students from the auc who decided to stay during spring break. No, they didn't decide. They, oh, they, they couldn't afford. They couldn't to, afford. They, they couldn't, couldn't afford, afford to go and anywhere. decided to have an event, a yeah. party together. Yeah. So decided you, to have a party. Then that in itself to me, as a, you know, as a person that's like always looking for things to motivate myself, if, um, you know, if you don't have anything and you just put your mind together and then you think about the other people that's probably around in the same space, that are feeling the same way. Like they probably felt really bad about themselves. They're not having no money to be able to go to any one of these places that was for spring break or even go back home. And then they decided to throw this picnic and now we on CNN talking about it. It's crazy. Grew to hundreds of thousands of people coming from around the country to yeah. Freak Nick. And you talked about the cultural uh, element, which I thought it was just gonna be about Freak Nick, but also about the music yeah. and the uh, Southern influence on music and culture and how you would use the event to introduce artists. Talk yes. about that. Um, well, I mean, once once I realized, because I mean, at 16, I think, that's when I, you know, got my license and I started driving around and I could actually see what was actually happening. Um, that's when, um, that's when I started knowing about Freak Nick. As I turned 19, 20, Criss Cross came out, which it was 92. And then um, I got my I, I got my label started in '93, and in '93 is when I really started saying, "Wow, this Freaknik thing is something. Um, we should try to use this as a marketing tool, right? All of these people in the streets, all these people walking around. Let's give them music. Let's give them flyers. Let's put up a So So Deaf billboard. Let's do everything that we can to be, you know, to use this as a promotional tool. And from '93, '94." To 96, I, you know, that was what I was doing. And the two fed each other. Yeah, 100%. So um, how do you then reconcile? Because near the end, in the, the late 90s, um, it became, as I said, much wilder. And there were um, assaults, sexual assaults. Yes. And it became known for that near the end. How do you reconcile the nostalgia of, of what people loved about Freak Nick and what it became, the uglier side? Um, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's really, it's not really, you think nothing you can really do, uh, <laughs> to reconcile. I think it's just, um, um, because it, one thing about it was that it wasn't just a block. I think what people don't, that's the other thing that people don't realize. Like 
people say, well, Greek Fest was like this in Philly and this thing was like this in well, Miami Beach, right? And Miami Beach is just Miami Beach. Yeah. The kids don't go across that bridge. Yeah. In Freaknik, they was in College Park, they was in Decatur, they was all downtown, they was everywhere, it was people everywhere. And I don't think you understand that magnitude. So also, it's hard to govern all of these areas at one time and make sure everybody's safe. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, um, and you, you don't you don't know that that's that's the energy that's that we're headed into. Yeah, and uh, eventually the committee that created it or was in control of it, they suggested that it should end because of uh, in the late '90s what it became. Well, that was the city that this. Then that's another thing that was the the disconnect to me was that the five people who created Freak Nick weren't talking to the city. Mm. And the city created a committee that wasn't talking, talking to, to the, the creators. Five, the creators. It's on Hulu, yes. so I suggest everybody go watch it. It's number that. one, by the way. It's number one on Hulu. As it deserves yeah, to be. Yeah. Let me ask you, um, can I ask you about the Super Bowl fit? Of course. Um, <laughs> you still stand by this? <laughs> the, 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 the look, you got a lot of, of ribbon online for it. Oh, yeah. I mean... I don't I don't know why. <laughs> okay. It is what it is. I mean, you know, Listen. I think I think that, you know, um as a as a person who's an entertainer and as a person who made the world put their clothes on backwards with crisscross. Yeah. Um I I just put on clothes and, you know, if <laughs> if if it excites the eye, yeah. you'll see it again. Listen, I, I, I went to find those socks. I was like, I'm just as a joke going to wear the socks. I can't afford those socks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford those socks. Let me ask you that we talk about politics on this show. 2020, you backed um, the Biden uh, Harris campaign, did some work to get out the vote. Yeah. You're back in uh, Biden again, 2024. I don't know. I've been working so much. I haven't really been paying attention to make sure that, you know, they saying the right things and doing what they're supposed to be doing. I mean, I feel like, um, I do notice that we, we they, they need help though. You know what I mean? I feel like I feel like Trump is um using everything that he could possibly do to get everybody vote and try try, you know, doing everything that he can do. So um I haven't really got my head locked into it, but I have noticed the little things that I've been saying. Okay. Um I mean I know that, you know, like I said, I I'm I'm I've always been um a supporter of Democrats, so um um I guess, you know. But you got to, they got to earn it. So yeah, they get, I mean, yeah, it can't, it can't be, you know, I think that was one of the big problems is that we keep, you know, if we support you, you got to make sure you do what you got to, you know, do what you tell us you're going to do. Talk about it. Let's see about it. All right. Jermaine Dupree. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right.